My name is Patrick Degg, and today we're going to talk about vSphere Integrated Containers Storage. And specifically, we're going to look at Vic helps you address the data persistence problem with, with running containers. So um, containers, by definition, are ephemeral and stateless, which means that um, when a co container goes away, um, all the data that was written to its internal file system also goes away. So um, we want containers um, to be immutable. We want those images to be immutable. Uh, it makes deployment more consistent. It makes deployment more predictable. But there are some use cases where containers require a level of data persistence. So we're going to look at how vSphere Integrated Containers tries to address that challenge. Um, so with Vic, we start with this um, construct of a virtual container host that's backed by a resource pool. So um, we use a resource pool here to provide us with a flexible resource management construct. And then inside this resource pool, we create one virtual machine. And this virtual machine is our Docker API endpoint. So by providing a um, Docker compliant API, we can create a Docker native experience for our end users where they can interact with this using native Docker CLI and um, API tools. So um, if we look at the storage that we can provide with vSphere Integrated Containers, there's three types of storage that we can provide with vSphere Integrated Containers. The first one is the image store. So um, the image store, I'm going to put an asterisk next to it because that's the only storage that's mandatory as part of creating this virtual container host. This is the only storage that's mandatory. So um, what this is used for, it's used for two things. So the first thing we use this for is we use it as the working directory for this virtual machine. So the VMX file, the VMDK file, and the logs, all the files that make up that VM live under this directory. The second thing we use this for is for our image cache. Now, um, Docker uses this concept of a registry that is used to store the images. Um, now, when you request an image to be instantiated from Docker, it'll first look at the image cache. If it doesn't have it locally, it's going to go out to the registry, pull it down, and then copy it to the cache. So um, that's the second thing we use this for, is as the image cache. So this image store needs to be a vSphere data store. It does not have to be dedicated, um, but it does need to be a vSphere data store that we associate to this function. The next storage we're going to look at is these volume stores. And there's two types of volume stores that we have in vSphere Integrated Containers. And this is where we're going to start creating persistence for the actual data in the form of creating Docker volumes. So um, the first type is the vSphere data store. So um, again here, I'm specifying a vSphere data store to be used as my volume store. So um, since this is a vSphere data store, it means I'm creating VMDKs. So every volume that I create with Docker will get created as a VMDK on this data store. And we're going to see in more detail how that works in a few minutes. Uh, but for now, um, you have to remember that when you create this virtual container host, what you're doing is you're mapping your vSphere resources into this Docker consumption model. So as a vSphere admin, you're taking the decision of how to map these vSphere resources to the Docker consumption model. So um, when you specify a vSphere data store to be used as a volume store, you can specify the data store itself, in which case we're um, going to create a vic subdirectory. And under that vic subdirectory, we're going to create a volumes directory. Um, the other thing you need to specify when you create this vSphere data store is a label. So the label is going to be used um, from the Docker API to identify this volume store when I want to create a volume on it. So um, for the purposes of this example, let's um, call this my vSphere store. So that's just a label that's going to be used again to reference this data store. Now there's a special case um, for a label. You can uh, specify the default label. Now the default label is going to enable the use of anonymous volumes. I'm not going to get into the details of anonymous volumes. Um, they can be very useful in development, but I would be very, very careful about using them 
um, for any type of production use. Now, um, the one thing about these um, vSphere data store and the volumes we create on them is that um, they create a one-to-one -one mapping with the container. So it's one running container for one volume. So they're, they're, they're good to use for um, you know, maybe data that needs to be private to a specific container, um, but they cannot be shared among multiple running containers. If you want to share data among multiple running containers, you need to look at our second type of data store, and this is the NFS mount point. Now it's important here to point out the key difference. So this here is a vSphere data store. It can be vSAN, um, it can be iSCSI, it can be NFS, um, but if you're using NFS in this, in this context, you're using NFS to back a vSphere data store, which means that VMDKs are getting created. When you're using NFS in this, con in this context, you're using NFS as a mount point. You're presenting an actual file system and files to your containers. So it's two very different contexts, even though we're using NFS to back them. So um, this NFS mount point, again, it can be shared among multiple running containers. Um, and the way we specify that when we create the container host is uh, we need to specify using NFS colon slash slash that we want to use an NFS mount point for this volume store. Then we need to specify the um, IP information, so network information on how to contact this NFS mount point. And finally, you can also specify the UID and GID to use uh, because that can be the tricky part, right? Specifying the right UID, GID for that data to be accessed from within the container. Um, and lastly, um, again, we need to specify a label. Uh, in this case, for the purposes of this example, Let's just call it um, NFS store as the um, label here. So um, now I've specified my image store. I've created two volume stores to be used. Um, so now let's switch gears and um, we're going to you know, switch to the, the persona that's going to be consuming this. So that's your Docker end user or your developer. You know, now I'm the person that's going to be consuming this using that Docker API. So um, the first thing I need to do is I need to create a volume on these newly created volume stores. So to create that volume, I'm going to use the Docker volume create command. Um, and I'm going to create two. So the first one I'm going to use um, as an option. I'm going to use option volume store. vSphere store. So I'm creating a volume on this vSphere data store. And um, let's call it data vol. So data volume. So what's going to happen here? So um, under Vic volumes, I'll get a new folder called data vol. And under this folder, I'll find my VMDK. So that's the virtual disk or the virtual block device that's going to be used for this volume, as well as some metadata that um, we use in the back end. So that's how this gets created on your vSphere data store. As a second example, I'm going to look at this NFS mount point. And here, for the NFS, we're not allowed to use the root file system. So we're going to create a directory under that root file system. And then when I specify this as my volume store, I'm going to get a volumes directory under here. And now, using the same docker volume create command, using the same option volume store. This time I'm going to specify the NFS store. And uh, let's call this volume shared vol. Because like I said, since it's, we're using an NFS mount point, this can actually be shared. So uh, what's going to happen here is I'm going to get a new subdirectory under volumes called shared vol. It's going to get created empty. And then as I start uh, writing files to it from the containers, this will get populated. All right, so uh, we now have two volumes that can be used with containers. Now, one thing to observe here, the volumes are created, but there's no containers yet. So um, it's that independence that's going to allow you to persist and have these volumes survive the life cycle of your container. All right, let's run a container and attach um, the volumes to see what's happening. So we're going to do a simple docker run command. We're going to use um, the dash v switch to attach a volume. 
Um, so we're going to attach first the data vol, and we're going to mount that in slash data in my container. And next we're going to specify my shared vol, and we're going to mount that in slash shared in my container. And then I'm going to run an image, a homegrown image called my image, uh, with the label 1.0 for version 1.0. So let's look at what's going on, going on here. So um, I run the command against this API endpoint. So first it's going to look at this my image. It does not have my image in the image cache. So it's going to go out to the registry, pull down the layers that make up that image. It's going to cache it here, version 1.0. Once we have it in the local cache, we can actually instantiate our container. So let's instantiate our container here. Um, this is vSphere integrated containers, so every container image gets instantiated as its own container VM. So this is a container VM running my image version 1.0. And then um, because I specified these two volumes, these will get mounted in my container. So slash data. This volume here will get mounted in slash data. And then slash shared, this volume here, will get mounted in slash shared. So now I have my container. This piece here is ephemeral. So anything that gets written inside of here will, will get deleted when I get rid of the container. But these pieces point to external volumes. Everything I, share, I write in um, slash data or in slash shared will get written to these volumes. So it will survive the life cycle of this container. Um, so next, let's look at an example of where this is useful. So um, let's um, imagine for a second that um, my development team has released a new version of this image, version 1.1, to address a vulnerability. So now I need to update this container to version 1.1 um, to make sure that it's current and secure. So, um, in the container world, we don't really patch running containers. We will patch and update the image, and then we'll tear this one down, and we'll bring a new container up with the um, new version. So you can see where having volumes that exist outside of this container become useful in terms of providing that persistence. So um, let's look at what happens. So first I'm going to run docker stop to stop this container, and then I'm going to run docker rm to remove this container. So this container will stop, it will get deleted, so this is gone, this link is gone, this link is gone also, but these volumes are still around. So if I take this command again, I run this exact same command, the only thing I change is I replace this 1.0 label with a 1.1 label, so my Docker engine would look at this cache. It does not have the 1.1 label, so it'll go to the registry. It'll pull down the necessary layers to update this to 1.1. So now it has the 1.1 version of the image. So it's able to instantiate a new container as a VM. So I get another container VM that's running my image, now version 1.1. Right, and then I'm reattaching the same volume. So slash data gets attached here, and then slash shared gets attached here. And now all the data that was written there by the previous container is accessible to this um, new instance. Um, so to recap, we talked about the um, different types of um, storage. The image store is mandatory. Um, it can be any um, data store in your vSphere environment, existing or, or new and dedicated, whatever you want to do. Um, and we use it for the VM running directory as well as the image cache. Um, and then we have two types of volume stores. The vSphere dot, uh, data store type of volume store is great for having this um, private data that needs to be um, just internal to the container. And then this um, NFS mount point is great if you need to share the data between multiple running containers. So with that, thank you for your time and have a great day.